The Merlin's claw is quite articulate. Right now, her intentions are unknown, and Jing Yuan wants us to be honest. Maybe I'll just stick to the facts we know. Let's cut to the chase. Before the crisis struck, the Astral Express was guided here by a Stellaron hunter, a wanted felon, in an attempt to resolve the Stellaron crisis. However, everyone in the cosmos knows of the Stellaron hunter's reputation. So, why did you place so much trust in them? Could it be that some of you have a connection with them? Apart from the Law Fu, there are many other worlds suffering from Stellaron corrosion. For example, Urelo 6, the world that the Express stopped at before reaching the Law Fu, was one of them. To the Express, Stellarons act as roadblocks on the Silver Rail and pose risks to the warping process. And that's why dealing with Stellaron issues is part of the duty of the Nameless. Ah, I've heard about those problems caused by Stellarons. The Express connects various worlds, so it makes sense for you to take care of this. The Cosmos is a mess, and the Trailblazers are just doing their best to fix it. Let's move on to the next question. The reports suggest that Don Shu, the master of the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus, colluded with the Lord Ravager and used the power of the Stellaron to resurrect the Ambrosial Arbor. But here's the thing. Don Shu was just a chief alchemist. Even if she colluded with our enemies and summoned the Stellaron, how did she manage to bypass the Vidyatara guards around the Ambrosial Shu once. Her closest friend was killed during the war on the Fang Hu, and she harbored deep hatred towards the hunt. So she spent years making preparations in the Alchemy Commission in order to take revenge on the Xianzhou. Revenge is also a form of the hunt. However, that doesn't explain how she managed to bring the Stellaron into the Scale Gorge waterscape, which was guarded by the Vidyatara. Well, you should ask Don Shu herself for the answer. Unfortunately, Don Shu is dead, and even her corpse has crumbled into ash. That's one less clue we can pursue. According to the report, Lord Ravager Fantilia is the mastermind behind the entire conspiracy. She disguised herself as an amicassador of the Skyfaring Commission and traveled with you, only to vanish without a trace later on. It seems too convenient to label her as a scapegoat. I was there, fighting Fantilia alongside General Jing Yuan. But she absorbed the power of the Ambrosial Arbor and gained an almost indestructible physical form. Perhaps that was her intention all along. So, a pawn of the destruction wanted a flesh and blood body to live in. <laughs> hmm, interesting. That's quite a new perspective. Oh, it seems that your answers have addressed all my questions. Generals, I am finished with my questioning. So, what do you think, General Fei Shao? The doubts in the report been cleared up? <sighs> the two nameless have been honest in their answers. Even though there are some tricky details, my intuition tells me there is nothing wrong. However, the three questions I posed earlier were not just for the nameless, but for you too, General Jin First, the disciples of Sanctus Medicus grew uninterrupted on the Law Fu. Yet the six charioteers were not aware of it. That was a dereliction of duty. Second, you believed in the Stellaron Hunter's prophecy and entrusted outsiders to solve the crisis, even granting them access to the Plague Mark. That was a dereliction of responsibility. Third, 
You insist on holding the war dance right after the Ambrosial Arbor crisis, putting the law foo back in the spotlight. That is a dereliction of wisdom. Merlin's Claw, is this your line of thinking or the Ten Lords? From the moment I walked in, I made it clear that the questions I'd ask might not reflect my actual thoughts. The disciples of Sanctus Medicus were deeply rooted and have been plotting for a long time. I admit it was my negligence for not noticing it early. As for the Stellaron Hunter's prophecy, I didn't believe all of it. But in the end, the Law Food did survive the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis. So, I think it's safe to say that Elio's prophecy about the future holds some merit. And as for the war dance, do you think I'm unaware of the risks? However, risks can also be opportunities. The law foo has lain low for too long. I believe it's time to stir up the dregs hidden in the depths and wash them away once and for all. <laughs> Just as I expected from our sophisticated divine foresight, you have a way with words. I like it. But, unfortunately, ever since the report was submitted, the Alliance has been filled with rumors and speculation. Even within the Law Fu, there are people accusing you of neglecting your duties, resulting in the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection. So what are your thoughts on all of this, General Fei Shao? As a fellow Arbiter General, I fully understand the difficulties of this position. Personally, I think all these rumors are meaningless drivel. Across the sea of stars, the divine foresight knows better than anyone else what happened on the Law Fu and the meaning behind it. Just as what happened on the Xianzhou Yao Qing recently. You mean the Xianzhou Yao Qing is also the scouts of the Verdant Knights have sent back reports that Borison are making trouble again. The Borison packs that were once divided and scattered have started swallowing each other up, forming larger and larger packs. Moreover, there's an entity named Mongus behind it all. An entity? According to the report, this entity isn't actually a Borison. It's a woman claiming to be the messenger of the Master of Immortality. She's described as having 12 faces and 12 pairs of fangs, as cruel as poison and as elusive as quicksand. The Borison believe she'll give them a chance to rise again. <sighs> That's Fentilia. That's right. You're lucky that I'm the one who came this time. If it were the Patina Justice or the Seer Strategist, this conversation might not be so friendly. I've always had faith in my instincts, so I don't doubt your good intentions. But the Alliance has its fair share of questions and doubts about the Law Fu. So my plan is to come up with an acceptable answer to satisfy the Alliance. What's in this plan, General Fei Xiao? General Jing Yuan, you already know what has to be done. But since you don't want to be the bad guy, I'll take care of it for you. You need the final word from the Ten Lords Commission to quell any doubts. And for that, I'll have to ask the two Nameless to visit the Shackling Prison. No, I'm not imprisoning you. While you're there, I'll ask a judge in the Ten Lords Commission's interrogation division to record a detailed testimony with the karmic mirror from both of you. We'll fill in the gaps that weren't covered in the report and silence any protests within the Alliance. I'm okay with that. Your willingness to help is truly heartwarming, youngsters. 
Then, as the Merlin's claw requests... Oh, there's one more thing. This testimony is for silencing the voices of opposition within the Alliance. But I would like to urge General Jing Yuan to listen to the pleas of the Foxians on the Xianzhou Yaoqing. So, you are here for Hu Lei. Exactly. Hu Lei is locked up in the Law Fu's shackling prison. Since he is the broodlord of the Borisin, I want to transfer him onto the Xianzhou Yaoqing and imprison him there. The recent movements of the Borisin suggest they're planning something big. So we must act preemptively. It makes sense to have the Foxians keep an eye on their arch nemesis. Since you trust my judgment, I'll repay that trust. What do you think about all this, General Huayan? <laughs> I was worried this would turn into a heated argument, but it seems like both of you are on the same page, solving each other's problems. Couldn't have asked for a better outcome. And as for Hule, I'll send my lieutenant Zhao Chao and Moza to check on his condition in prison and ready him for transport. If there are no more questions, shall we get this started? <laughs> <laughs>